Welcome to another episode of Dollars with Decker. And I'm not gonna lie, I am fired up for this episode because I just had fly in Chris Klein, who's one of the founders and current CRO of Bitcoin IRA, which completely changed the game because they were the first actual way that you could legitimately invest in cryptocurrency and hold it in your retirement account. And they have blown the roof off of this. They are the OG in the space and they currently have almost 200,000 users and about 14 billion in capital under management. So I'm fired up. Thanks so much for coming in, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me today, Brian. Like I said earlier, long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> yeah. Just thrilled to be here. Oh, uh, dude, I appreciate you flying in. And so, you know, one of the things that I personally love, and I feel like there's a brotherhood when it's like in the matrix, right? When like, when Neil goes in and he takes the pill and he sees the matrix and he's like, oh my gosh, I feel like that when you meet another individual that understands cryptocurrency, it's like we can speak on a different wavelength because we like see the world. Our eyes have been opened, you yes. know, kind of. We've by seen it. the behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah. And then I think I think it's a little magnetism too, because you're a guy like there's a lot of crypto folks that it's not like CrossFit, where if a guy's into CrossFit, you know he's into CrossFit. <laughs> yeah. Crypto, we kind of like if people want to know about it, but you have an energy just to share it with people yeah. that just amps me up. Like yeah. you're just like me. It's like yeah. the more the more people we get to understand this, it's not just good for us as investors, but it's good for just monetary policy overall. This is this is a Ca cataclysmic change in a tectonic shift in what, what money is in the world today. So. Yeah. And I think one of the things that I really loved about it is if, you know, you've been in institutional finance, typically the way it works, let's say when you have a typical company, so typical company starts to do well. Well, before they ever go to an IPO and they do one of their series ranges, they go to a VC firm. VC firm calls their favorite investors, maybe Gary Vanderchuk or Ashton Kutcher. They get in on a pre-IPO on a really early way, and they're almost guaranteed at that level to make, to make it a money. crazy amount of money on a turn. And then what ends up happening, most companies go to IPO, the regular retail guy finally has a chance, and we get dumped on yeah. by all these early investors being able to, and the one thing I loved about cryptocurrency is it was our first chance to do that to Wall Street. Yes. Right? Yep. You know, and you know, kind of going into that, you know, I always love to hear, because I, I personally was not a crypto fan the first time I, you know, was exposed to it. I thought it was a Ponzi scheme. My brother was Bitcoin mining back in 2012 or 13, and I told him it was a Ponzi scheme, right? And yep. then uh, made a little bit of money and then ended up figuring out a way to do with it. And so went down a rabbit hole with crypto. Thus, I'm obsessed now. What was your first time that you heard about Bitcoin, what was your thoughts on it? And like, when did your eyes kind of open up or get those laser yeah, eyes? It's, and everybody has that experience, right? That yeah. moment. So for me, same thing. I didn't I didn't necessarily think it was a Ponzi, but I thought it was make, make believe. Mm -hmm. So we were, me and my partners, I came out to Los Angeles with a one-way ticket and a suitcase in 2012 and uh, lived in a motel for a year around the corner from the office. Nobody knew I lived there because <laughs> I didn't want to have roots. I didn't want to get stuck with all these leases and all this other stuff yeah. when I didn't know what was going to happen. It was my first chance of being an entrepreneur. So uh, we're working, we had had some successes, some, some failures, maybe a few companies that made between five to 10 million uh, yeah. in a year. And, and like, that's not bad, no. but nothing that's gonna change your life, right? Yeah. And we were doing well, we were doing LLC, some precious metals, private equity, mm -hmm. all inside of retirement. So, and we knew the retirement game was, and I, I say this honestly, is archaic. Yeah. It just, it wasn't, the, not the tr t TDs and the fidelities, they were all pushing the envelope of apps, fractionalized trading, these things. But this whole trust industry for alternatives was left in the behind. It kind of just came to fruition in the 90s and never grew up from there. So we wanted to make it better. We knew there was a way to push technology, disrupt that space. And uh, we were doing, uh, I think at the time was some LLCs and something with real estate. And my partner, Camille, comes over and goes, hey, have you ever heard of this stuff? Could we put this in a retirement account? I went, what are you talking about? I had no <laughs> yeah. idea. So of course, you go down the rabbit hole. I took the orange pill, started learning and going into it. And I really went in first of, I'm an operations guy. So mm -hmm. how am I just going to make this fit the box? Yeah. So I want to put this in here. I know how to put other assets in there. A whole nother ball game when it comes to crypto, 24 seven security, wallets, uh, multi-signature, like just layers on layers. So we had to create all those things from scratch. But for me, the moment where I really fell in love with it was when I figured out having. When yeah. that was for me just a game changer. And and I'll tell you a little story about when I was on Bloomberg yeah. uh, later in the interview, but uh, there was a moment where I made a joke and nobody got it. And I was like, <laughs> it's because I'm not Bitcoin guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that was really for me when you're 
in essence, punishing the creator of the currency and have a finite supply to it. We, you and I are same age nearly. Yeah. We grew up where everything was just getting bigger, 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 mm-hmm. right? The, including the monetary balance sheet for yep. our country, just growing, 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 and the debt and the deficit. And there's a point where that world ends and we're going to live to see it and mm-hmm. our kids are going to live to deal with it. Yep. And so that was for me and also becoming a dad. I think yeah. that really helped. I, Isabella was four when, okay. I start, when we started Bitcoin IRA. Yep. So yeah, so I mean, you got in because I mean, for me, I had always thought when I was in real estate at the time, I had always thought like house values are going up in value. They're, they're, like there's value being created in real estate. And then what really changed it for me was I looked at it because everything in the United States is dom- denominated in US dollars, right? Everything we did. And so we have this perceived notion that real estate goes up massively in value or all these things go up massively in value. But it's only because it's being denominated in a dollar currency where it is being inflated by more dollars being put into the system. Exponential growth. To an insane level. But then I looked at it and I went back and I was like, and this was probably 2000. Price it in Bitcoin. Yeah, and price it in Bitcoin. In 2019. And I was like, wait. We're actually losing value. We're losing an insane amount of value, which made me have that realization. Shoot, why am I holding my wealth in something where... If I actually use that as my basis and compare it to other hard assets, those hard assets are going down in value when I compare it to this true programmable money. And I think that's the same thing is people just don't understand. I think one of the best things that ever did for Bitcoin was having, you know, Satoshi Nakamoto, who nobody knows, yeah. obviously created lacking the, it, face. lacking the face of it. But I also think some of the other part of it that makes things is when you started as this make-believe guy or this guy that nobody knows created it, that's what ends up penetrating people's minds. And Fresh in Mind was that anonymous character. Exactly. From the Occupy Wall Street movement and all those things. So people put the two together. And it is, I mean, out of, what do they say? Out of the fire and the ashes comes the phoenix. Yep. This was born right in the midst of what we went through. You were in lending. I was coming out of college. Chaos. I mean, it was just, and I was talking to my dad at lunch because he lives out here. So we got to, and he was, we were talking about, he, the next one, there was, you, you're from California. There was a small quake. Oh, wait, was a small quake. Mm -hmm. There's a big one coming and it's, and it's, and it's going to rock everybody at their core. Nobody's going to be safe from it. Even Bitcoiners are going to struggle because other asset classes like COVID, everything sunk during COVID. But what was it all about? Recovery, right? Watching, yeah, Bitcoin went down to 7,500. A lot of people made a lot of money. They were smart to buy then. Uh, And I was on a phone with a client that bought a whole bunch at that moment in time this morning. And he's done very well. And he's a big fan of your coin. You like Solana. Yeah. And he's a big fan. So he's doing some swaps. So we talk about that. But, But just the recovery rate. Now you can see we're just getting back to even in places like the Dow, S&P, uh, even real estate than where it was pre-COVID yeah. and Bitcoin's just at a whole nother level. Yeah. And now one of the things I think for me that really helped with a lot of people coming in where I'm in a lot of times c- circles and everyone knows me, even though crypto isn't my main business, they kind of know I me for you that. become a crypto uh, guy. Cause I, cause <laughs> I, I love it. If I tell my wife all the time, like when I have a big exit, Crypto is all I'm going to do and teach it and love it. But one of the things that they all started coming up to me, I was just at a culture index training with our board. And these guys are old school guys, right? Like mid 50s to mid 70s. Was it cool to watch their aha moment on culture index? Because everybody comes in thinking, oh, it's another one of those, right? And then it changes the way it operates. And that's kind of how Bitcoin works. Like these yeah. disruptive vehicles, you if you just brush the surface, you're not getting there. You got to get deep, roll up your sleeves, get your hands dirty. Yep. And the, the old guys, same way. Same yeah. way. And what it was, I think, for them is they're, everybody's big concern that you nobody really had an answer to was what happens if the United States bans Bitcoin? And even though you're like, you can't ban the Bitcoin, you go down the technical way of it, they don't get it. They yeah. still think, you know, the United States is supreme and all everything they do. But when that spot ETF passed in Huge. January, and then you see people like BlackRock and Larry Fink just being not only pro crypto, but pro tokenization of almost all these everything. assets, right? Yeah. With you guys, at Bitcoin IRA, did you guys see an increase in the amount of like activity or do you think that was a big moment that there was a a shift from say maybe that baby boomer population or even people that are, you know, our age, thinking if it's more legitimate? Yes, I think think it definitely impacted activity, but it wasn't 
like 17, 18, mm -hmm. or even 21. Yeah. Those were different types of waves. Our early adopters were, I like to call them the engine nerds. Yeah. So we had guys from NASA, uh, Rocket Roy, close friend of mine. <laughs> yeah. He's number 11. There's actually a picture. He got me this hockey jersey, Bitcoin IRA. I have the number one because I had the first count. <laughs> yeah. He is number 11. Oh, that's and he, awesome. he crashed our holiday party in Vegas one year <laughs> with his awesome. wife. Coolest guy in the world. This is These early adopters, 16, 17, they were, we had guys quitting their jobs at Intel so they could take their 401ks and put it all into Bitcoin. And they've done really well, but it blew my mind at the beginning because I was like, what am I missing? Like, I know I got a great product, yeah. which is what business is about. I got a product that people are interested in. I've got early adopters. How is this going to get to the next level? And I think what, what we found was we were always a little bit ahead of the curve of the ETFs. I used to joke that I love the ETF. Mm -hmm. I think it's awesome. It's great for mainstream. Great. I have some of it. I went yeah. and bought some right away. Yeah. Uh, there's a difference between that and the real thing, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but the the I used to always say it's like putting gas in a Tesla. It just doesn't quite make sense. <laughs> but yeah. we had to do that because mm -hmm. the traditional finance world was not going to adopt blockchain technology at the accelerator that we needed so that we could change. We're going to get there. We may yeah. not see it in our lifetimes, but it'll happen. Yeah. Our kids will see it. And but that was I think that was a really big one for me. And then watching the 21 wave was a lot of FOMO, right? Oh, yeah. It was just take my money, just wh wherever you could get. What you're seeing now is an investor that's much more sophisticated as far as asking the right questions. Yeah. They're not just chasing the run. Most of the activity we saw for the ETF was not January, wasn't yeah. even February, March, or April. It was Q4 of last year mm. when people were starting to say, it's coming. I smell it. I can feel it. Yep. And then it was all about, did the inflows happen? Now they're doing billion dollar inflows yeah. in a single day, which is just mind blowing. Uh, and this is where we're going to see that whole supply game come yeah. into play. It hasn't had its full effect. You talk about it a lot. I call yeah. it the lagging having, yep. the lagging having effect. Maybe September, maybe October might take every mm -hmm. having's a little different. Yeah, yeah. But when it happens, it, and I always tell this to people, don't wait to see it because you'll already be too late. Like it's, it happens so fast. And if you're, especially with IRAs, yeah. you're trying to you position money all the time. Yeah. You try to move money from a bank, hardest thing in the world to do, right? We try to make it easy in our world, but they make it hard. They love to take your money. They hate to give it to you. And so it could be one, maybe two weeks, sometimes with pensions, three or four weeks. Yeah. And then that whole run that you were looking for could be gone by the yep. time you get there. So it's good to see people getting in earlier. Um, but I think the big thing people are realizing is there is a difference, just like gold miners and gold ETFs mm -hmm. came out. Awesome. Easy access or emerging markets or even real estate, yep. right? You're, you're kind of, I feel like a more tangible type. Yeah. Of, I know it's hard to say real Bitcoin, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's, it's not an IOU. It's yeah. sitting in a wallet segregated for you, much different than sitting as a proxy certificate. We don't know what the camels are going to be long term. You can't redeem it as Bitcoin. You have to sell it yep. as dollar. And the one thing I'm noticing, I don't know if you watched Sunday nights lately, it starts to get a little crazy Sunday afternoons into Sunday nights because of what's going to happen when the markets open. Oh, yeah. They don't trade 24-7. So Bitcoin's price movement starts to, they're doing a lot more things on weekends than they've ever done because they're positioning for what's going to happen when the market opens on Monday morning yep. and the ETFs can start trading again. Yeah. So, and it's a 24-7 asset. Yeah. I mean, it's just what it's designed it's, for. And it follows the Forex market. You Hardest know? thing we did as a business, by yeah. the way. We didn't kind of realize that right away. <laughs> yeah. And then we went through 17 into early 18 we were doing phone trades, old school style. And there was a big fire. I don't know if you remember the one that was by the Getty Center. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, there, yeah. I could see the flames from my office. And, but it was Christmas and people wanted to get their trades in. Market was going up and I was doing, I was on the phone. I mean, you're an entrepreneur, yeah, you know, yeah, dude. La Rasa, yeah. yeah, get on the phone, get it done. Yeah. And I was talking to somebody, I was like, I can see flames. And they're like, well, can you put my trade in before you go? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. and then and then you can go and be safe. And <laughs> and that was when the, we woke up, we came in on, not even before, but January 1st, like the New Year's planning session, which I love to work on New Year's. Year's day. I don't know yeah. about you, yeah. but everybody else is sleeping. Everybody else is it's a free day. Over, yeah. And it's my day to say, I'm going to be one day ahead this year. Yep. I'm going to start one day early. And uh, we were sitting down and that's when we said we need a 24 seven trader. Yeah. And we had to work at it because really? most you're so yeah. used to traditional financial assets, nine to five. You don't have to worry about things breaking when people aren't there, yeah. you know, and, and if they break when people aren't there, you know how it goes with consumers. Yeah. They lose trust. They lose loyalty. So it really, I mean, it took a lot to get there. Now we've got 65 coins. We've got swaps. We've got limits, conditional. We got all kinds of new stuff coming out yeah. this year too. But every layer of that, the modules, you know how it goes. If, yeah. the, if the foundation's not right, everything else breaks on yeah. top. Yeah. So, and one of the things, kind of getting into that, and this is not a lot of people realize it. And so, one of the, the big reasons why I wanted to have you on the show was I get probably the most common question I get asked is, Brian, how do I avoid or delay Capital paying gains. taxes yeah. on my <laughs> cryptocurrency, right? 
And for a lot of people, like for myself, what you had traditionally had done was, you know what? I have my short-term bags that I keep in my Coinbase or I keep on my exchange. I sell out of it. I know I'm going to have to pay some capital gains that year. I have to buy a property, do depreciation, all that. And then I have my long-term bags. But realistically, at the end of the day, I end up paying taxes, obviously, on that money. And then the problem is, is then I put it in one time and it just sits in my ledger wallet. And that's, and it was, that was kind of my own version of my retirement account yeah. beforehand, right? Well, now what people are really starting to realize, especially with some of these limits that have been going up on IRAs and the amount you can contribute yeah. to it. And that's really what I wanted to kind of dive into briefly is so, People don't really fully understand when they think of a Bitcoin IRA, they basically, I know a lot of times just think like, oh, okay, you know, means that means I can buy Bitcoin in an IRA account, but that's the only thing I can buy. And then I got to manage it. And then I got to try to sell it. And I got to try to do all these things. And that, and that's the way people view it. And in reality to it is it is an unbelievable way, depending on which way you go in, you know, whether you're taking your pre-tax dollars, you or know, I'm throwing, or your post-tax, which is what I prefer, obviously, on that route. I remember when we used to be eligible for those. Yeah, I know. It's a little stupid. <laughs> our kids, though. Yeah, our our sim- kids. That's what I say on that. And then, but now with you guys, somebody can actually go ahead, set up a retirement account in just a couple minutes, and then they not only, they can actually buy, they could sell, they could swap. And it's not just Bitcoin. So like what, what kind of, kind of walk me through, you know, what that looks like, like what type of cryptocurrency coins are available on your yeah. guys' platform? Well, let's first just look at the way you can, you set it up. So it's a lot of folks think it's something completely different than an IRA, but it's, you got Ross, you got traditionals, you got SEPs. SEPs are really good for small business owners, which almost everybody has a side hustle yeah. now. Everybody's got in a way to open up a SEP IRA. You can have up to 50,000 or 56,000, I think it is now, mm-hmm. contribution limits. There's also solo Ks. Mm-hmm. So if you're higher, you're making even more, you can put put away between you and your wife about 150, 160. Wow. Um, we may want to look at one of yeah. those for you yeah. with everything going on this yeah. year. Uh, but those are great tools. You get that benefit of post or pre-tax. You're open. It's the same rules. IRS looks at it the exact same way as your Fidelity, your T. Ameritrade, et cetera. But you now get to do what's called self-direct. So you've got, and it's not just Bitcoin and not just Ethereum. We have 65 coins, but the same account you would open with us, we have folks that have made a bunch of money. What'd they do? They went and bought real estate with the winnings. Uh, they went and bought gold with the winnings. They've been going into private equity deals with the winnings. They've done private lending, mm-hmm. uh, hard money loans. There's all these things that you can do that you can't get a Fidelity or TD Ameritrade. Some are turnkey. Some are take a little bit more, yep. you know, from your, yep. your experience. You got to know uh, things with lending, UBIT, that kind of stuff. Yep. But Bitcoin is strictly turnkey. You come in and you can fund three ways, right? Okay. So contributing is the most common. Mm-hmm. I can put up to $7,000 yep. in, in there. Uh, I think we're, we're not 50 plus, so I guess we can't do yeah, seven, can't 8, do eight grand yet. Yeah. yeah, I wish we were. Yeah. But you can do that. And we set it up where you just open the account and you can deposit those funds and be trading within about 24 hours. Wow. Uh, sometimes like if there's a, we need an additional piece for compliance or whatever, it may be one more day, but that's the fastest. Yep. And most people just start there, but they also are intending a old 401k. So mm. most people don't realize I left a job. I don't have to leave my 401k behind either. I can take it wherever I want. It's not tied to that. And if you are no longer working, that opens up the ability to roll it over wherever you want. If you're still working, you have to be 59 and a half to be able to do in-service gotcha. movements. Gotcha. Uh, and then our most popular is transfers. Yep. So just, I've got an IRA at Fidelity, Schwab, wherever it may be, and I want to take a partial or a full of this and transfer it from A to B. You're moving money left pocket to right pocket, so there's no tax event mm-hmm. that takes place. It stays in its same classification. Once it's there, you log in and you can securely, safely, 24-7 trade all 65 of our different assets. Wow. Most popular, Bitcoin and Ethereum, but big players out there, you talk about a lot yeah. of them, Algorand, Chainlink, mm-hmm. Solana, even the meme coins, yeah. they had their day in the day, yeah. day in the sun. We actually had a Shiba special when oh. it first came out. Oh, really? We gave away 100,000 Shiba to oh, everybody. that's awesome. Which, I mean, it sounds like a big number, that's, but, but maybe not. you never know. Yeah. It goes, we have a guy that thinks it's going to go to a penny someday. Yeah. And if it does, he's going to make more than both of us yeah. combined with all this hard work. Yeah. All this, and yeah. And then there's new ones coming all the time, uh, but 22 really changed the game for tokens. Okay. And you yeah. saw that. I saw mm-hmm. that with your cheat sheet. Yeah. There's some that just, they, there was this 
oh, all these are bad, right? Yeah. Luna was bad. Everything, Everything's bad because it's a security, a security. Walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, mm-hmm. it's a duck. But that's not the case, right? Yep. And they even, I think ETH might win the countersuit against yeah, the SEC. I do at too. Some point. I hope they do yeah. because they aren't. It's not what, no. it's, it's the backbone. It's like buying utilities is yes. what, what Ethereum's like. Exactly. If I could have bought the power outside or the wires that are underneath this building or the internet when it first yes, came out. exactly. If you could buy just shares of the internet back then, every one of us would have done it. Oh. But we couldn't. It didn't nope. exist that way. This is the next evolution for Web 4, Web 5, yep. 6, 7, whatever we get to, whatever our kids are going to play Yeah, with, right? exactly. That's what my uh, grandfather always said. He was like, you know, learn your lessons from me and invest in what your kids love. Yeah. You know, and it's exactly, you learn the lessons from That's, the past so, and you invest in the future. So we have daughters the same age. Yeah. Uh, Izzy's 10 and she is, she got, we, she was, we have friends down the street in LA that do commercials. So she was mm-hmm. in some commercials younger. Oh, awesome. So that's earned income. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she worked for dad. I know your yep. kids work for yep. you. Uh, I see what you make them go through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're way tougher dad than <laughs> yeah. I am. I love it though. I'm so yeah. proud of it. Like young dads, we got to stick yeah. together, man. It's a yeah. new, it's a new ball game. And so she wanted, she has a Roth uh, with Bitcoin and Ethereum in it. And it's done well. Like, yeah. she, I think she's got college covered at wow. this point. I hope. I mean, yeah. college is getting pretty expensive. Pretty expensive. But yeah. she doesn't, I don't even know if she wants to go. And, I, yeah. and I'm not going to push. Like, Me either. Like, like I, what are your I thoughts went, on that? Like, I'm curious, you know, that you, you, know, you brought go? it up. So I went to Biola University. So okay. I went there and got a double major. I, you know, I majored uh, in accounting. And then I also did a, a business administration major because I wasn't sure if I wanted to go into law. Um, but in, in all reality, I'm one of the few people I know that I'm actually using my major, like being an entrepreneur, like using accounting. But my personal belief is this. I think we're going to be getting to a point in the not so near future where a plumber is going to make more money than a doctor at Kaiser working yeah. because of the massive shortage of millennials not wanting to work into yeah. the sun. And there's a huge shortage on the of the trades that are out there, right? And you, it all started really heavily when we saw kind of in, you know, the Obama era and even a little bit before that of like as much student loans as you can get. Everyone goes to college and does all this stuff. It's like no leave no child behind. Everyone should have a house. What do these things get us in trouble with? Yeah. They always end. There's never a good end game to them no. because it's not how capitalism works. No. They're supposed to be janitors. They're supposed to be CEOs. And that, that's life. That's the yeah. way the world works. And we want everybody to be egalitarian. Kind of sounds like socialism. Yeah. Kind of sounds like communism. Yeah, yeah. Uh, both I'm not fans of. Yeah. Uh, so I went to University of Colorado Boulder. Okay. Okay. Uh, yep. Which awesome school? Go Buffs. Yeah, um, they have Deion Sanders as their yeah, coach. That's why yeah. we're so famous. Yeah, but we're the most famous 500 team in <laughs> yeah, college exactly. football. It's hilarious to me. <laughs> exactly. Uh, great school. Enjoyed my four years. Um, I actually got into a lot of more expensive schools, but my family's middle class. My yeah. dad was a contractor growing. Uh, so I grew up. Th- I would have been a fourth generation GC. Yeah. But my mom said absolutely not. Uh, but I know how to do everything. Yeah. So I, like I can get good. my hands dirty, which is helpful. Yeah. And I show Izzy as best I can. Yeah. Uh, but it always surprises my wife's Latina, so it always surprises her family <laughs> when I can like do yeah. something because yeah. they're like white boy can do something. Yeah, yeah. No way. Yeah. Uh, so for me, like I don't. I mean, poli sci, international finance. I had a leadership program, like top fifty kids in the country got into it. Wow. That's probably what I use the most yeah. is the things I learned in that. And that's actually PLC are my friends still from college. Like yeah. I was in a fraternity. I know a couple of those guys still, but that's like the core. Yeah. They're doing amazing things. we got heart surgeons. We've got people that have, there's a girl out of uh, South Dakota, Raleigh. She was the youngest female to make partner as a defense attorney in South Dakota's history. Wow. It's so, like the cool people yeah. you get to meet and be around in networks. But I look at Izzy and I'm like, whatever's sitting in that account, whether you want to use it to run, build a business with dad, do you want to go learn a trade? Do you want to go be an influencer? Because yeah. you know, this generation, it's going to be tough. Yeah. It's going to be tough for them. They all want Everyone to do it. Everyone wants to do it. Yeah. Gonna, there's going to be thousands of those, millions of those. Yeah. And like, nobody's going to be there for the cool, real stuff we need. Yeah. And I think trades, you're absolutely right. Trades are going to be huge. Big shift back to trades. Even you see welders making $30, $40 yeah. an hour back then. Yeah. Now that minimum wage is 20 in yeah. California, which we can go down that rabbit yeah. hole. Yeah. Uh, that that's the shift that's coming. This economy is always going through tectonic shifts. When yep. we were kids, nobody would have ever thought we'd be doing this no. right now. This was not. This was re- arranged. This was saved for Walter Cronkite and the nightly news. And this is like in CNN and 60 Minutes. Yep. And this is people look at this more with more validity and loyalty than anything that they're getting yep. on the mainstream because it's not I, put through a filter. Like yep. right, you know, when you go on the media, even when I've done media, media. I literally get a list of all the things I'm not allowed yeah. to talk about. Can't say this. Right? Can't say this. Can't say this. So I was like, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So. And it's so fast. Yeah. Like my Bloomberg, I went up there 
and it was about about a month ago and but by the time you're just getting in a groove they're moving on to the next sound bite because the attention span they think our attention span is so short it's not it's because they're not giving us stuff to pay attention to yes this is something where when you get good content like this which is why i'm a huge fan yeah, of this. Yeah. that's why i flew out to see you <laughs> good content gets people's attention and they appreciate it and they yep. keep coming back for it that's going to be tough to do because it's just everywhere you know yep. she's big i don't know if your daughter's into the skincare stuff oh yet. my gosh oh. i spent all day oh, you were at Sunday Sephora. At Sephora. You were at Sephora. Yeah. Oh, oh, everything. She I, has makeup, fridges, and all. Oh, my God, yes. I all this, and I was like, babe. I was like, Kinsley. For the masks, I am right? For, yeah. for the masks. I'm 42 years old, and. Here's my bar of soap. I Exactly. My <laughs> bar of soap, and I get Botox every four to five months. You have $3,000 worth of skincare. At nine, now you just turned 10 years I old. I pray for their husbands. And I was like, <laughs> exactly. You are so, and I was like, they, they, you know, but I've realized they view it as collecting the same way you and I do with baseball cards. Yes. That's or, what yeah, it is. Because yeah. our girlfriends will come over and they'll swap oh, yeah, they different swap, pro yeah. products. And it's it's bragging rights. Yeah. They stunt with it. They stunt yeah. with it. Yeah. It's, and it's so yeah, funny, yeah. you know. And she wanted a vanity for Christmas. <laughs> and I was like, a yeah. Nine years old because she turns ten. She turns ten in January. Yeah. I looked at my wife. I'm like, "Baby, are you, is this healthy?" Yeah. And she goes, "There's no stopping it." It's yeah. Like, and I see there's there's this dichotomy of parents right now mm -hmm. that no devices, none of these things, got to stay. And I don't know. I think they might be doing their kids a disservice. Yeah. There's the other side. Remember, there's there's always the two edges, right? And then the middle. The other edge is they use the the, the tablet as a babysitter. Yep. They have no relationship with their kids. It's just take the tablet and leave me alone. That's not healthy either. No. But banning it all together is not healthy either. No. There's a good balance between it. So one of the things I did with her was she started making some money on the crypto, the Bitcoin, Ethereum. Mm -hmm. So I, she wanted to, she was like, dad, tell me about stocks. Yeah. I'm like, well, not as exciting as Bitcoin <laughs> yeah. and other things, but this is how I learned from my grandfather was he said, choose the stocks that you have passion about. Mm. So I sat down, I said, what are things you're into? She goes, well, I love my games. So we went backwards and figured out who's making these games mm. she's playing. Most of it's Zynga, Zynga the guys yeah. that made uh, yeah. Farmville yep. back in the yep. day. So we picked up some shares of that and yeah. had like the conglomerates around that. And I, I taught her the picks and shovels early. Yeah. It was like, yeah. you don't be the guy rushing for gold. No. You be the guy selling the, the assets to the guys yep. that need to go get the gold. Exactly. And she got that. That clicked right away yeah. for her. I was very proud of her for that. And going to that, because I know a lot of, I have a lot of viewers that are parents. And, you know, obviously when you go with some type of custodial IRA, why don't you just kind of walk people through the basics of that? Because I know a lot of times, like you were saying, people are like, oh, I want to open my kids a custodial IRA. But my kids don't make any money. And I was like, well, there's all these different ways you can earned make the money and yeah. earned income. So why don't you just kind of walk them through that and kind of how that kind of, you know, works. And if the kid could eventually use it for college or how not, like kind yeah. of just walk them through some of that. Yeah, I think it'd be really helpful. Question. So there's a lot of ways to do it. You've got Cover Coverdell plans. You got uh, college savings plans. Those are what you like kind of the Gerber, mm -hmm. you remember the Gerber yeah. ones oh, yeah. that never made any money yeah. for our parents, but oh, they yeah. all had to have yeah, them because yeah. the door to door salesman said, got you got to have this for your baby. Yeah. That was, a, that was a whole world, but the Coverdells, they have limits, but really the best way to do it, why we did the Roth IRA is she doesn't make enough to, she doesn't make so much. She doesn't qualify because there's the score mm -hmm. magic. You can't make over 150 as a single yep. or 200, I think it is now as a, as a couple. couple yeah. uh, and then you can't do a Roth. It's uh, So she takes the money post-tax. She's done commercials get paid. When she did the podcast, she came and was a guest. So mm -hmm. she sent me an invoice yep. for the services. So I paid her for the services and then that goes into her bank account. She makes a contribution to her IRA every year. It's She doesn't always get up to the seven, yeah. the 6,000. Kids don't make that much no. money, but it starts small. You know, get them to a thousand. I think you yeah. had something about 500 bucks but or something. 500 right bucks, yeah. yeah. 500 to 1,000 bucks makes sense. You get them there and then um, down the road. So mm -hmm. uh, A, they're getting all this growth tax free, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's inside the umbrella and they can take it out for first time home buyer. Mm -hmm. They can take it out for college, uh, college expenses, higher education expenses. And if they don't do it for either of those, you're setting them up. Big time. I mean, yeah. 10 years old. I learned about an IRA when I was in high school. I remember our Spanish teacher. For some reason, Miss Gunkel, she listens to these. She probably will be thrilled about this. We get into Spanish class one day, and there's stuff about IRAs on the board. And I was like, am I in the right class? Yeah. And she went through a lecture just to make sure we had some financial literacy because they didn't give it to us in no. school. But there's a reason why they do that. You keep masses down. Yep. And that's how you can control populations. Yeah. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but it's pretty it's obvious. It's facts. I mean, I tell you we all the time. We know how to write a check. We know yeah. how to write a check, which is, when was the last time you wrote a real check? Oh, like, exactly. Or I think my landscaper is the only guy that doesn't take yeah, exactly. I think that's And I just leave the check on the door <laughs> for him. Like, I have a checkbook for just that guy. Yeah. That's literally the only reason. <laughs> and it's funny you say that because I tell people all the time, it's like, 
we go ahead and we are taught we need to know Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven or all these things that the we're taught. The Pythagorean told, Theorem. The Pythagorean <laughs> Theorem, right? All these different things that we need able to know. But yet, no credit score, no IRA, taxes. Not, no taxes, Anything none like of this. this stuff. And it really got me going down a rabbit College hole. College, too. That's yeah. the scary part. College, too. There was – I had to do math core things. I came out with a bunch of APs. Like, I, I wanted to get through college as fast as possible because I wanted to save as much money as possible. I knew this mounting debt was going to be oh. stressful. And I worked three jobs through summers to pay off what I could. And I'm happy to say, like, I remember people talking about the buying mm-hmm. amount. I was kind of bummed because I'm like, man, I paid them all off. Yeah. I should have at least me kept – I should have kept too. 10 grand me too. just so I could have got that little yeah. deal, you know? And, give me something. Yeah, give me a little something. Far. But, yeah. Yeah, that was my thought was like this mounting debt. So I want and but they make you take all these courses that you just never use, but everybody's got to take them, right? That's part of mm-hmm. higher education. But there was nothing in that core curriculum about how to live your life. I was just watching the 30 for 30 for called Broke about okay. athletes. That, oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. The one with athletes and how broke they are usually within three years of getting out. Mm-hmm. And nobody was teaching them in college years. Now, I think this next generation, the way these NILs are working, I mean, Shador Sanders is oh. making more than most rookies are making. Oh, and dude. he's not even play, playing pro ball yeah. yet. Hopefully that we've come over that hump. But for those of us that aren't a D1, yeah. A-star, all-star athletes, they need to. we need to be talking about this with our yeah. kids more often. That's why, I mean, when I was – my grandfather gave me this book when I was Izzy's age and it says how to beat the stock market. And, it's this bl- and for some reason, I signed my little name in it and I kept it for all these years. I don't know. It's one of those mementos. It came. My dad held on to it when I went to the one-way ticket motel route and he mailed it to me when she was born. And I and I started reading it to her. And now it's one of her favorite books. Yeah. She shares it with her friends. She's like, and it's 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 old. I mean, I was it's from the 90s and it's everything in there still rings today. It's basics. There's, not, there's no mystery to how to manage money. There's no, no mystery to how to take control of your finances. They want us to believe there's a mystery. They want us to believe that Bitcoin is so complicated and with the wallets and all oh, this, fraud, like you see it be, it bleeds, it leads with crypto. Mm-hmm. They they had a heyday with us in 2022. Oh, gosh. I mean, they would just loved it. I was doing, I did in 2021 into right before Celsius Voyager happened, I had done about 800 media interviews. Yeah. And I, I said to my guy uh, uh, in New York, Vito, I said, I'm done. Like, yeah. I, cause you're just defending, you're fighting that uphill battle. Yep. I was like, we well, just got to pause for a little bit. He's like, are you serious? I'm like, you're not going to win any arguments right now. These guys screwed it up for everybody. Yep. And they did. And I saw it. I, I remember meeting one of the guys, the guy, for, I think he might be going to jail. Like one of the Celsius guys, we met him it just because Lindy became mm-hmm. very big. And I said to my partner, I was like, I feel like I need to take a shower. Uh, yeah. Like, Cause there was, that was, there was a lot of unregulated industries attract a lot of bad yeah. actors. It's just what it is. You see all it in solar. Oh. You have to fight through it in solar. Everything. You saw it in lending. Yep. Every unregulated or uh, like underregulated yeah. I guess, yeah. industry has this impact and crypto went through it. But we're, the market's better for it, for what's happened. Mm-hmm. It wasn't easy. It wasn't fun. I think what we're going to see happen, especially when the lagging having effects hits, uh, I couldn't say more to people. Everybody I talked to, it's so funny. You know, your Uber driver tells you all about crypto. I, I have my backpack. Yeah. It's Bitcoin I right? Yeah. Every time the Uber driver has a story about crypto yep. every single time. And they're and in good years, they make a lot of money. And in yep. bad years, they lost a lot of money. But they're still my Uber drivers. Yep. I don't know what's true. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's a true statement. Yeah. But there's always those stories. And there's always these guys that'll tell, they always, they're even smart guys, smart, smart guys are saying, texting me, is it still, is it too late to dollar cost average on Bitcoin? It's never. Never. Whatever your Ever. rule is, right? What, you, you can take your cheat sheet, for yep. example. I took my numbers. I set my dates. I know I, and I bought in and I'm going to exit. I'm going to go off your tiers. Yeah. I'm really, I really yeah. like this because I have always had the emotional effect that hits. Can't. The greed gets in a little bit when you see my Shiba, man. I should have gotten out for way more than I yeah. did because I thought it was going to keep going. I actually, um, I noticed you posted something this past week about some, a couple of your wealthy friends gave me a million yeah. bucks, right? Yeah. Trusted you. Yeah. Same thing happened to me in 17 or 18. Yeah. No, 17. So it was m- April, May and, uh, bunch of YPO guys that know my, par- my partners, they just were like, they couldn't get in fast enough. Mm-hmm. So they go to Camille and they're like, does anybody know how to do this? And Camille goes, Chris has been building this thing. Yeah. And he knows the ins and outs. This isn't retirement money. Let me find out what we can do. So we took it and we looked like heroes because we bought Ethereum in April at 40. And yeah. you know what happened. Oh, 400 yeah. in a matter yeah. of weeks. And they thought I was... The, yeah. like, the you were, could, like, yeah, exactly. Could not miss. Yeah. And then, of the course, Oracle of yeah, Omaha yeah, number two. Yeah, yeah exactly. Know? I couldn't miss huge returns. And then I tried Ripple a little later in the year and I missed yeah. bad because Ripple. Ripple it, was yeah. up to three. Well, this was five. five. Yeah. It was like 
whatever, 372, and then it slammed down yeah, hard. hard. Yeah. And it still hasn't yeah. recovered back it did, to It points. did well when it got the win. Yeah. But there's something about Ripple people don't realize when they talk about coins. And you did a really good job with this with the utility component yeah. of your cheat sheet. I've always said that if Ripple is 10 to $20, it has now priced itself out of its purpose. 100%. Because it's supposed to replace wire fees, yes. transaction costs. So if it's more expensive than those, it won't disrupt. That's exactly. the reality. So, And we had so many people coming in back then saying, oh, Ripple's the next Bitcoin. No, no it's, it's not. not. Do your research, learn the basics of these things. I remember going to uh, conferences in 18, they're stand standing room only, overbooked like crazy. Consensus was like this yeah. in New York. It was, I had claustrophobia, I had to get out of there. And everybody was shilling some kind of coin. And then the next six months later, the same guys were just showing a new different kind of yep. coin. It was just this constant mess of nothing had utility, nothing had purpose, nothing was going to disrupt, but it was cool to say you had a token. Yep. That's the, these are the pieces that have hurt the industry, but we've gotten through them. Yep. We're better for it. I think that what's going to happen next is going to be like, this is where people, I, the people that I still have naysayers. I know yeah. you do too. Oh, tons of them. Uh, tons of naysayers. They will get into an argument over cocktails or something. I'm like, yeah. I can't change your mind. Like yeah. I can't, I said it once, I can't think stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just, even just getting like, and I think what people always think is I have to buy one Bitcoin. No. You ever get people like that? All the time. All the time. Well, I can't afford one big, you can buy 0. 0.000 all the way down to the, I think 10th yeah. yeah. decimal point. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And the Satoshi, you yep. get one of those and it's. 10 cents, 15 cents, and that's, that you can get off zero, but they find these, they build these constructs in their brain that they're not smart enough for it, or that they've missed the boat, or whatever it is, and then they just don't want to take the time for it to exactly. learn. Exactly. You know, that's, it, that's a big it's thing. A, and I think one of the biggest things that really hit home for me is when you look at Bitcoin is an asset and I Bitcoin still makes up the largest percentage of my portfolio, like as a single one asset, right? And it really kind of broke itself down. And Michael Saylor did a beautiful job. And he was actually, I believe he's talking with Graham Stephan. And, he, and Graham Stephan was like, you know what, man? You know, I get Bitcoin, but you know what? I'm sorry. I think buying oceanfront property, you know, in Newport Beach or in Florida is a better return on its value. It's super, super scarce. He and, explains his house in Palm Beach, right? Yeah. Bought it for like 100,000 in the 30s. It's worth 46 million today. And you think that's a good thing, but it's not. Yeah. It's and, the bad thing. And, and he says, here's the problem is, when you buy Bitcoin, like for example, if somebody's keeping Bitcoin in you know, an IRA or there's even holding Bitcoin on their wallet, one, they have zero chance, as long as they you know, aren't stupid and give it away, they have zero chance of the government confiscating it, right? So let's just say that there is a coup d'etat somewhere, and we're not talking necessarily the United States. Guess what? It's very hard to pick up your beachfront property and take it with you, right? Uh, where you can grab your ledger wallet and you can go anywhere and start all over. Number two is that I love that Michael Saylor, when he was comparing the two assets, he said, guess what? He goes, property taxes, right? Bitcoin? You don't have a property tax on it, right? It can sit there and it can accumulate in value from, you know, one dollar that you started off with to you don't $50 even have a subscription to your ledger. You have no you really subscription to, to your ledger. It's yeah. completely free. But property taxes, guess what? They charge you one, two, three percent, depending on the state. California, they reassess you all the time of whatever that value is. So if you start looking at that and you say, okay, my real estate is going up seven percent per year, right? but I'm paying a 1.5% property tax on that. And then my it, salary is not keeping up with that. That's exactly. A, that's a big catch and you can't do it and yep. people do it. And then on top of that, you have a maintenance cost and all these different things. And so, but people a lot of times just think of, I only want to invest in scarce assets. Yes, to a point, but what also is the maintenance of that scarce asset compared to the appreciation of that value? And so getting into, you know, one of the things I'm really curious about is, the, the cycle of Bitcoin, right? Yeah. You know, and we all kind of know that when people in their minds a lot of time think having up only, and you look at the charts, it you know, and, goes down and it always goes down after yeah. the having, and there's these boring periods. I remember periods. when CNBC called and they were like, why is it going down? <laughs> and I'm like, this happens every having. It always, and then also we're in a sell and may go away mentality. Yeah. Uh, it got two big wins, ETF and then having, and then it's, there's just not a lot going exactly. on right now. And that's happening across almost all alternatives. Yep. So we're seeing it. It's, uh, it's, it is a, it's, it kill, it's a curiosity for me too. Yeah. It's a big thing. Now with you, if you were going to look at it, in your opinion, just when do you think we will start to see 
Well, we'll see Bitcoin potential. Obviously, nobody's going to hold you to these answers. But just, you know, as a general idea, if you were just saying, hey, for my own personal preference, not necessarily a particular date, like what do you think in a time horizon it's going to be before Bitcoin kind of crosses that 73,000? And are you a person that thinks we're going to have a, a long traditional cycle? Or do you think we're going to maybe have a shorter cycle? What's kind of your opinions on so this? So it's funny you bring that up. Yesterday I was sitting with the marketing team and I had this idea that hit me of pick the day for 80K. Yeah. Because usually good ones roll off the tongue, right? Yeah. And so we're probably going to run something for our client holders where they can choose the day they think Bitcoin's going to pass 80K or oh, reach it yeah. and then give away a piece of a Bitcoin to oh, the winner. Oh, cool. Now it won't be everybody gets a piece, yeah. but like it's kind of like uh, if everybody picks October 16th, yeah. if there's 100 people, we'll divide it evenly. Yeah. Like, we got to work through it with legal compliance. You know how that goes. Yeah, but, oh, yeah. but that's the but so I asked all the guys and all of us were fighting for October 15th, 16th and 17th. Oh. And that's and I, and it's for me, it's just I kind of look at the days from having. Yep. I also I know that that's usually when we're going to be coming out of the summer solstice. Mm -hmm. and it's election year. Yes. And so and there's always an October surprise. Mm -hmm. I think this year it's going to be no surprise at all. They're going to drop rates because it's going to help certain groups and they're not going to go into election without dropping rates. It's just yep. not going to happen. So yep. there will be a cut. I don't know if it'll be 25, 50, whatever it might yep. be. It's the worst thing they can do right now. It's <sighs> not what you're supposed to do. Inflation's not under control. It's not transitory. But I think that we're going to see all these, all these things, you know, nothing happens in a vacuum. So these mm -hmm. little piece here, little piece here, little piece here. So October is going to be a very exciting time. Yeah. Then you ask the second half you ask is how long will this one last? Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of 50, 50, because I think mm -hmm. this is the one where people wake up. Yeah. And I think why we have had the, what stopped the last run was greed. Yes. Was, it was not the cycle with the, the asset mm -hmm. itself was doing exactly what it's supposed to do. This market shot itself in the foot doing things that they shouldn't have been doing. People yeah. started getting really risky, started 10x leveraging things, started moving things around, doing all this, and this hurt the industry. Same with 18 was like this run and done, right? Yep. This one I think will be longer because it's going to be the wake up moment where we have inflation, you have minimum wage, we're pumping trillions of dollars and sending it overseas. We've got all these things happening and people are gonna say, wow, maybe this isn't just about making money, this is about protecting money, yes. storing value, thinking about my future, whether it's retirement or otherwise. And that's where we're going to, I think it's when you get that thing to 80 and the best part was the guys are like, well, what if it's 90? What if it's, we'll do another one. Pick yeah. the day for 90, pick yeah. the day for hundred, pick yeah. the day for 150. The, these guys that had said 100, 150,000 sometime next year, mm -hmm. they're not crazy. No. It's going to happen. They, I, I don't know when, but it will happen. 100% agree. And, and then you get these accelerators after that because then you'll get back the FOMO. The FOMO will kick in and you'll get to 200 really fast. Yep. Uh, sailors for a million, right? Yeah, yeah. That's and, his play. You know, and, and when I look at it, and when, I think a lot of times <clears throat> people, they get their beliefs about what price of crypto or when crypto can run based on personal experience, right? And the problem is most people don't start paying attention to crypto totally. until it already starts running hard, right? Yeah. So most people, Buy especially, exactly. And, and if you look at the last cycle, we had the halving in the middle of COVID, like right in the middle yeah. of COVID, where people weren't really necessarily quite paying fully attention to it. And then you really look at that chart, and let's say you had that halving in that April, May timeframe, Bitcoin really, it was about that October time frame that it started to really kind of tick up there, start crossing 10, then 15, then 20. And it went on this rampant cycle all the way up until, you know, kind of peaked out, you know, that really beginning part of May, we had that double top. Now, this cycle, I am personally really torn. And the reason why I'm really torn is one, the cycle got off a little bit to an early start because of the ETF, right? Like yeah. it kind of front loaded. It was the first time ever. It wasn't supposed to happen. It wasn't way. supposed yeah. to happen. Yeah. Like we never broke a previous all time high before having, right? So that got pushed in. But the one, the two variables that I am really torn upon is number one, the Ethereum spot ETF. If yeah. that thing ends up coming, which already got passed, we don't know is it going to start trading it's a in while July for market to, makers to be able to do to that. Build, yeah. You know, so if that ends up starting if that ends up starting trading in you know sometime in july we could start to see Fast. that really a little bit of an accelerated and normally, cycle the eth cycle is after the exactly it used to be bitcoin would run people take profits eth runs ETH, yep. people take profits then we had the meme coin generation yep. that runs exactly that, these are the runs you've talked about it yeah but everything's out of order yeah bitcoin's early eth might run before bitcoin nothing's in tandem where you do see a decoupling though it's starting to happen is it from other asset classes yes which is which is good to see because uh, it is a risk asset 
but it is also in some people's eyes a store of value asset. 100 It has both sides to it. Yeah. Uh, and so that is, I'm just as torn as you, man. Yeah. It's hard. It's really hard. And because, now I wanted to ask yeah. you this. This was because yeah. you're my expert in yeah, some ways. Yeah. I've been think I've been watching Nvidia really really close. Mm-hmm. Nvidia, uh, I say it wrong, I think, yeah. but I've been watching that very closely, and mm-hmm. I think that there is some Bitcoin type hype that is happening on that stock. Yeah. And what goes up goes down. Yeah. And I'm curious, do you think that there's going to be a day in the next year or two where the Q t- the 10Ks aren't looking as good as they used to, yep. and the buyers and the supply is not there for the chips, and another competitor might slide in cheaper. Like, there's going to be a day where that's not going to be. It's. I mean, a lot of people say it's what's holding up the stock it's market 100%. right now. It's the prop. It's a, well, I mean, up. I actually did a study on it yesterday, and you look at from October of 2023. And you look at it to today, S&P 500 is up 35%, the S&P index. You pull NVIDIA out of that, you're at 14%. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's that big. Now, I love that you brought that up because I also, I never trade against the trend, right? The trend is your friend, they always say. But what I like to look at is it is an innovator. It's a leader in the space. It's doing things. But so was Tesla. Tesla went on this same thing crazy run that Tesla went on. And Tesla, obviously, because they they were like, oh my gosh, there's nobody to compete with Tesla. Tesla's doing all these cars. And then what ends up happening is- People are underwater on their Teslas now. Did you see that coming? Oh man. And what's crazy is the same thing. So what did Tesla do? They overproduced cars. They brought all these factories on board, thinking they're kind of one of the only guys in the game. And quietly in the waiting, Ford. what do you get? You got Ford. Yeah. You start getting all these other people that are out there, Rivian, all these other competitors. I never understood why, because you know Tesla's for 10% of its startup money came from Mercedes. Yeah. I never understood why, because I think the concept of a Tesla car is amazing. I think they're the most uncomfortable thing to drive oh. in the entire world. I Like, they just, they're not comfortable. And it's like, why hasn't Mercedes sat down with Tesla and made the best car possible? Like, maybe even compete with your Lambos. Oh, like, dude. That comfort that we're looking for, with what we what we and want, and they're with doing it with the new G wagon. There's a new electric, electric G wagon, G wagon coming out. that's supposed to do it, but you know that's what I see kind of happening is some of these other competitors that are out there in the space are starting to ma- manufacture chips. And what's happening is it's like Patrick Mahomes with the Chiefs, right? Like oh, he wins one Super Bowl, yeah. then he comes and wins the next Super Bowl. So then what happens? You expect him to win a third Super Bowl, yeah. right? The hype gets so crazy. And he creates his next generation of competition. Ask Tiger yes. Woods. Tiger Woods changed golf. I don't know if you're a golfer. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm a I terrible follow, golfer. I'm a terrible golfer. I've played yeah. since I was eight, nine years old. I got a hole in one when I was nine. Oh, and shit. I should have quit right there because yeah. that was the peak. I yeah. was done. And it's never been good since. And uh, But watch what Tiger did. He built this whole generation of golfers today is because of what he did to golf. You you create your if you're successful you're gonna create your own competition. 100%. It comes and that if you're and if you're ignorant to that that's when you start getting yourself in trouble. Yeah. And yep. there's a mania around it. I was gonna also ask you. I saw one of your posts about uh, GameStop. I gotta yeah. ask because yeah. this is a very interesting thing oh, that's yeah. happening. And now I hear that there's murmurs because they're upset about the dilution. The retail buyers are thinking about going and pushing the shorts. Yeah. So they're going to become the stock boys. They're going to yeah. become Wall Street now. The next shift is, all right, you made us money. You turned against us. We're going to crash your stock. Yeah. And they have the power to do it. 100%. They do it. And and that, I mean, with that, I, I, I watched a little bit of that video. Roaring of Kitty, the, yeah. yeah. That was the biggest the, letdown. Was, so oh. I, 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 with Roaring Kitty, I think of one of two things is either happening. One, he's either one of the smartest people on planet Earth and he went on live and went on live stream to prove to the SEC and to Wall Street, like, hey, don't fear me. Look at these are the type of streams that I do. I'm not pushing anything to kind of kind of die some yeah, of the heat down. You don't want to get that target on your back. You know, you yeah. don't want to get that target. But I also see on the other side, he exercised a lot of those options, right? And so he actually- yeah, he major, took money off the table. He took money off the table. And now he's a big- Because his big, wife was like, you're oh, taking you're, money off the table. You're worth, you were never, <laughs> get, look at you where, you're never going to be worth this. And so, but what I think he, what I think he ended up doing was it could actually be, and this could, this is a total rumor, but it's actually something I've seen multiple times now. So- they pushed GameStop stock up so high that GameStop was able to sell and get a massive treasury of, of cash, right? Yeah. So what a lot of people were saying is now Roy and Kitty with the massive shareholder that he is of the stock, many people are saying that he's going to put some pressure to actually utilize that treasury and bring about it to start acquiring Bitcoin in their treasury. Makes sense. And so I'm not, this is total speculation, but... 
it could be something like that that is a like move. Micro strategy. Like what micro strategy made more has money done. on their Bitcoin. Tesla had a year where he made more money on, on their his Bitcoin, Bitcoin than, than anything on else. Bitcoin. And that's we what, always joke with us partners is if we would have just taken the money we put to start this business in, in Bitcoin, Bitcoin, we would be done. Oh, <laughs> but it's way more fun. You know, yeah. the entrepreneurial path is way more fun. It's, yeah, it's because it, you, you really earn it. And yeah. also, I mean, you're probably the same guy as me. Is it's tough to get up and train when you're in silk pajamas. Oh right? yeah, like and you've probably seen that with partners over the yep. years, like keeping that hunger. And I think that's just to bring us back a little yeah, bit to yeah. Bitcoin because we've gone down. Yeah, a yeah. I think that's part of what ha is happening in this world. There was an arrogance that Bitcoin is beneath them from the traditional boys, the J mm -hmm. Jamie Diamonds of the world. And then while he was talking smack about it, his guys were activating buying it, it, buying yeah. it like crazy. And I think you're going to have this shift that's going to come in. It's, we had early on, two things we had early on was, you thought it was gonna be a young person's game. We thought it was gonna be young men and women that were getting into crypto early. We got, I first time I ever got on CNBC Live was we figured out that 75% of our clients were born after, before 1976. Wow. Which was not expected, yeah. right? Like we, so the, the, the baby boomers and my dad's generation and, and us, we're into this. Obviously the next generation is gonna be into it yep. for sure. Uh, but that that was one thing that I think you, you, you can't make assumptions in this yeah. space. You can't just assume that Bitcoin is a Ponzi or Bitcoin is fake money or it's for la money laundering or for terrorists. You have to realize this thing is here. It's here to stay. The market's better for it. And what we're going to see next is just exciting. Like oh. that's, if anything else, I'm just pumped about the next year of yep. what's going to happen. And I think, like I said, I think that cycle is going to run a little longer because it's actually going to be somewhat of a paradigm shift. Yeah. It's not just going to be a cycle. It's going to be, you're going to see more and more folks wanting to take crypto for their real estate transactions. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know uh, what's with that million dollar listing in New York oh, when yeah. they offered him they, oh, and the guy was like, I'm not now. gonna take that. And if he would have taken it, it would be he would, that, hundreds, like, of millions. hundreds of millions <laughs> yeah. of dollars. And these are the things where the greed, you know, fear, greed, FOMO, those things always have impacts. But there's a new, there's just something new happening. I, it's, I, I can feel it. Yeah. I, I hear it in your things yeah. you share. I hear it from other guys like us that are out there talking and people, it's, we can bang on the drum, right? Yep. But if they don't hear the drum, nothing changes. Yep. I think people are starting to hear the drum a little bit. Do more. you think on that with big players, you know, entering the space with, you know, whether it's all these ETFs with additional companies now having the ability to hold some of these assets on their balance sheet, do you think we will have a little bit less volatility in Bitcoin's price in coming years? Or do you think we're going to be, for an example, like we go up to, you know, 125, 150,000, and then it plummets back down to $40,000. Do you see that lessening at all with yeah. most, with a lot of people not selling? Yeah, the long-term hodlers. The yeah. hodlers are gonna keep that stability over time. You're yep. gonna start seeing that. And that's when it's gonna mature even more of an asset. And then everything underneath it, there's gonna be, there's a great commercial Algorand has out mm -hmm. right now where mm -hmm. the guy goes, they're at a grocery store mm -hmm. and they're going through, and this is when digital currencies become mainstream is like yeah. what it's called. And the guy with Bitcoin goes on and then there's, he doesn't have lightning network. So it's, he's sitting there and everybody behind him is getting frustrated. It's like the guy that would write the check, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. back in the day. And then the next one, the next line is Ethereum. And oh, the price of the product is twice as much because the gas prices, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, you know, that congestion is, says yeah. the lady. And then the Algorand is like self checkout. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Because there will be manifestations of more efficient chains. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean that it, those coins are going to go to 120? No, they're no. not the store value. They're not money. Yeah. Izzy, uh, Isabel has this thing I taught her early for, I think. I have these, my dad sent these commemorative coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Ripple. This is mm -hmm. back 17. Yeah. Those were the big four, yeah. right? And so I taught Izzy at that age, one word associations. Yep. Bitcoin is money. Yep. Litecoin is shopping because her yeah. mom loves shopping, yeah, so yeah. she loves shopping. Yeah. Ethereum is contracts and yeah. Ripple is banks. Yep. And to this day, she that stuff's right there in her, in her mind. There's 65 more of those that are yep. coming that are going to change the world in yep. some way, shape, or form. Yeah. And I think what really helps it, I was actually... About a month ago, I was sitting down with, there's a, a group of us guys. We In the are, meantime, guys like you are going to see the ones because, man, you call them. I got to say, I, I cannot endorse coins or anything. Yeah. Like, that's not yeah. – because we're we're vertically integrated. We're regulated yeah. by – like, so there's there's certain things. You can say a little bit more, and yep. you know how to pick them, dude. Like, yeah, I so appreciate You that. shock me sometimes. <laughs> like, I got to know. So yeah. I was like, I got to – where's the secret? Yeah. Where, where are the – You know, and I think that's what it comes down <laughs> to. You do your is, homework, man. And the way, the way I look at it is this – and this is what changed it. I was sitting down with, there was five of my friends and we all grew up. We've been friends since we were 18. None of us came from money. We all slept on each other's couches. Like 
we were the last people that people would really pick to be like, that's, we partied all the time. We were wild when we were younger, but now we're all settled down. We're total dads. We're like, go to bed at nine o'clock. We're like, most of us don't even drink really anymore. All that. So we're sitting down and it's one of my buddies who owns a massive cannabis company. Another one who owns a massive concrete company. Another one who owns like a, another, a, large patio cover company that's out there, uh, myself and another buddy of mine who um, had sold his like um, timeshare business. They actually took timeshares and bought them off it and repurposed them into condos and did all the stuff. So we're all sitting down and these guys, a couple of the guys were the ones that had begged me to give me money to invest. Cause I like, don't do that yeah, for people. Yeah, I, I, like I don't want to do, do it. I don't like to do it. I just, I don't want to do that. Because everything becomes your fault. It, exactly. And these guys, like, they're my best friends. They're like, just, just please just put in. We don't care if we lose it all, blah, blah, blah. So, but I was like, hey, guys, before you guys are doing this, I need you guys to, like, tell me what, what like, what are your fears on cryptocurrency? And so one of my buddies who's absolutely brilliant goes, Brian, I just, if you look at the, the world and there's all these currencies that are out there in the world, you got the US dollar, you got the rupee, you got this, you got that, you know, and you have all these currencies in the world, you know, you kind of have the dollar that reigns supreme. And so what I'm really fearful of is with all these other cryptocurrencies, you know, that they are basically going to kind of like water down the efficacy of them because there's so many of them. And I was like, I was like, I don't want to say his name, but I was like, dude, you have it wrong. I go, think about it this way a rupee, the yen, whatever, the peso, they're all trying to do the same thing. They are a currency that is just people of that nation put faith that I'm gonna be able to exchange this dollar for that good, you know, of value. I said, they're just a currency. I said, what you need to understand cryptocurrency is like, is they are different companies. And, but Bitcoin, think of Bitcoin as gold, right? And then you got to think of, let's just say you're Ethereum. You can think of that as, you know, basically your digital oil, your oil or whatever you want to think of it that way. I said, but when you're looking at all these other cryptocurrency projects, they're not trying to be money no. at all. Zero. I said, what they've done is in our grandparents' day, people formed a C Corp. Take a C Corp public. You issue shares of a stock. You have a share of that stock, which gives you voting rights and governance of that, you know, as a shareholder. And then you're buying a share of that stock because you're in the belief of what they're doing. They're going to be able to generate a higher return on their capital than your capital just sitting in the bank. But you don't think your share of stock is the same as your US dollar, right? Your share of Apple and your US dollar aren't the same. I said, you need to look at that with cryptocurrency. I said, what they've done is, is rather than forming a C Corp, they've went out and they formed a decentralized autonomous organization known as a DAO. And that DAO, instead of issuing shares of stocks, is issuing cryptocurrency Green coins. Tokens, yep. They created those tokens and those tokens they have governance tokens. They have, they have all policies of this. how coins get burned. Exactly. Which is great. These are it's all same things. thing as shareholder buybacks yeah. and burns. And it's and it's a dis decentralized decision making process exactly. instead of a bunch of guys sitting in a room making a decision and exactly. surprising us all on a 10K call or a quarterly exactly. call. Exactly. Yeah. And I think once people understand that, that our kids and even our generation would rather invest in a token that is basically has a preset rules of how they're going to be making decisions on governance, things they're allowed to do, buyback rates, burn rates. You can see the allocation of it. You can see the white paper of it. You can see if it makes money or not like a uni swap. And when you analyze that and you look at that the same way you look at a company, you can actually pick good projects. The problem is most people don't do that. Yeah. They look at render and Price. be like, render, it's $5. I have $500. Sweet. I could buy 100 of those. I'd rather do that over Bitcoin. Yeah. Like you wouldn't go down the stock list on a stock Just and be like, which one has $5 one can stock? I afford? Boom, yeah. that yeah. one. And that's what people do. That's 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 the construct in our brains. That's yeah, what we're, known, we're known to do. They they tried fractionalized training or trading. A yeah. few of them have done. Yeah, Robin I don't Hood, think it's yeah. really taken off. No, though. it really hasn't just exploded the way that you would expect because people don't think about investing the way that they should in a exactly. lot of ways. Exactly. And it, this is the, what we're trying. I think we're preaching to each other. Yeah. The day is, it's a chance for you to just get outside the box, get yourself off zero, decentralize yourself from what is yeah. and, and be a part of get off zero because you're going to kick yourself if, yeah. you, if you're not doing it. And if you're going to do it, I'll show myself one more time. Yeah. 
do it in an IRA because yep. long term you're going to be holding it. This isn't a short term game. It can be, yep. but if you're really locking it long term, I did a, a speech in Puerto Rico in 2017. Uh, the mayor was there pushing to get all the crypto guys yeah. to go. It was, I think, Coin Agenda Caribbean or something. And I had put together this thing called the 30, I think at the time it was the $35 million mistake. Mm -hmm. it's two guys, $5,500, $5,500. And I gave them hindsight to buy and sell Bitcoin from 2012-ish to that point. They buy in the dips, sell in the high. So I gave them perfect hindsight. Yep. And I did the math of with the cap gains mm -hmm. versus what they would have at the end. Of, and there was a $35 million <sighs> gap between it. And that was back then. That was when oh. Bitcoin was like 7,000. Today and where it's headed, that, that gap's just growing and growing because it's not just you got to ante up to Uncle Sam, right? Mm -hmm. It's the purchasing power that you're going to have after you do that. If you have to pay 15 or 25% in short term set settings, and that's where we're at today, yeah. it could change. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're going to be Lose, you're not going to be able to get back into the market with the same amount of purchasing power you have if you're in an IRA setting. So. Yeah, and I have a question on that because I think I try to give people really tangible things. So I'm going to I'm going to paint a common scenario in a household, and I want you to tell me like what accounts you would set up long term for them. Right. Okay. So so I'm going to say I have a dad and a dad is a contractor. He's a self-employed 1099 contractor, right? Say he makes $120,000 a year for an example, right? And then you have a mom and a mom, we're just going to say is a teacher for an example, right? She will do a private school teacher. So she's not on pension and all that. And they got two kids. Let's say they got a 12 year old kid and an eight year old kid, right? And so when you're looking at it, cause a lot of people, I think why you see IRAs, and the demographic of the IRA is an older, typical, like older person is because there's, they understood it. They, they were taught about it a lot more. Nowadays, people don't know about it and they're being thrown this brokerage account, this brokerage account, this, this, yeah. this, and they miss out on, if I was gonna tell somebody, if there's one, if you could only make one investment per year and that's all you could do, and that's only the money you have, you take it and you, as long as you're under the limits, Roth IRA, max it out at $7,000 per okay. year. If it's the only fun. thing you do. And if it's the only thing you do, it'd be insane. So, do it every year. So looking yeah. at that, so we'll take the dad. The dad is self-employed. I would employed. look at a set for him, yeah. for sure. Okay, It perfect. just makes sense. Because, so why don't you kind yeah. of break things so down? Let's what start with dad. Is. Let's start with dad. He's the breadwinner. Yep. So dad's got, he's got his income. He can do up to, I think 56 is now the number. I'd have to check. But mm -hmm. there's more of a contribution you do as a self-employed individual yep. with a set by Ray. So start that because he's probably, if he's a contractor, he's got good years, he's got bad years. He's got yep. feast and famines. In the good years, when he's got a lot of build, that's when you max that thing out, put 56. If you're not having such a good year and you got to keep food on the table, you don't have to put 56. It's not an obligation. Yeah. It's not like you're signing up for an annuity that they're going to take 56 from you every year. Some years you can skip it. You don't want to, but you want to yep. get what you can in there. Yep. You said mom's so like school. So if we look at that with the SEP, just uh, I want to break it down. So like, and that's so also pre-tax. That's what I was going to yes, say. So tax, so SEP's pre-tax. And so, so people can understand that. You're going to lower your income. Yep. So if he's making 150, exactly. you said, and he puts 50 in, his now his taxable income is 100. Yep. Because he's lower. He's now he's getting the credit for putting that money aside for the future. Yep. And so now he's set. He's now lowered his taxable income, which is going to lower his tax base mm -hmm. for the year, which is awesome. Yep. He might actually win long term yeah. rather than taking 50 grand and trying to, people try to desperately just save. Yeah. I got to put 50 grand in a savings account. And, and then emergencies come and other things, and they're not making any yield on it. And they dip into it when they shouldn't be doing it. And they're not putting in these structures that the government has given us yep. for our benefit if we think about it. Yep. So that's how you set up dad. Yep. You so also, let's look at mom. So it's, oh, so go you ahead. said she's private. So private let's say school. mom, let's say mom, we're just going to show it so we don't give it the pension and stuff. We're just going to say, let's just say mom is a W-2, works for a private school, so they don't have the traditional pension and stuff like that. Mom makes 70 grand a year or so. What would you recommend for mom to yeah. do first? Well, if uh, if she if she doesn't have a 401k, which I'd be surprised with some of these. I, yeah. I, I mean, Izzy goes to private school. I think your kids don't. Yeah, yeah. They have, they're, they're having to get pretty yeah. competitive with the, yeah, with the they, purse, they have to actually, with the purse no, yeah. nowadays. But, yeah. And so if, if they do offer one, max out the contribution and get that corporate match. I don't know why people don't do yeah. that piece. I have... 100 plus employees and it sh always shocks me. We're a Bitcoin, we're a retirement company. We offer them Bitcoin IRAs completely free, no issues, and they still just, and I get it, I was there, younger, 
you can barely make the student loan payments, you're barely making the car payment, you're making rent, you know, food is expensive, kids need things, emergencies come up, the last thing you're doing is thinking about retirement. And so people understand what he's talking about on a match there. So a lot of companies have anywhere from 1%, 2%, 3%, 4% match. What that basically means is, let's say mom in that case makes $70,000 a year, and let's say her company says, we're gonna offer you up to a 3% match, okay, right? What mom can do on that $70,000 is she can take up to $2,100 of her money and out of hers, put it into a 401k and her employer will give her $2,100 to match that. Now mom can put in more than $2,100, but the employer will only match up to $2,100. It's free money. But here's what most people do and why, you know, Chris is so frustrated and I am too, is there's a lot of times where people have a 3% employer match making 70 grand a year and they put in $500 and they literally get $500 to the employer and the employer just says, well, you could have had an extra 1600 bucks, but, you didn't, but you didn't. And you'd compound that over time, especially when you start off really early on, people could literally be costing themselves a million dollars plus if they're doing this early on yeah. and missing and North matches. Mutual just came out with, in three short years, Americans went from thinking they needed $900,000 to survive, to retire comfortably mm -hmm. to now 100, 1. 1.5. So in just that short time period, that's basically COVID. That's yeah. that time period. So that's mom. So let's say if, mom, yeah. if mom's is not getting something from the company, uh -huh. something to consider, I'm not a tax buyer. You probably know more about yeah. this than I do. No, no, but yeah. But you could, and you may do this with Allison, yeah. is put her on your payroll. Yep. If you have a small business, put her on your payroll and then you can help, that can increase the amount of, of contribution you can do in that plan. Yep. Get with your tax guy, make yes. sure you build it out right. Don't try to do this by yourselves. We There's a lot of great estate guys out there. There's yep. a lot, I mean, even an H&R block. Can help yeah. you, with that. you don't have to go anywhere fancy, but make that decision so that you can, you're now married. You can also play around again if she's not and you could maybe get her in a Roth setting if you're filing separately because yep. of the magic. But the easy thing is if it's offered, take it from your employer if it's not offered maybe put it on the payroll if that's not possible get just at minimum open up a traditional ira and put the seven thousand or eight thousand if yep. she's over 50. yep unless you have a younger wife yep who knows right with yep. this, 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 this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. then with the kids get them to work and not just get them to work fake like yeah. i always tell this to my friends don't just make up earned income yeah a it'll get you in trouble at some point and you don't want that little itty bit of earned income to get you in, an, in a bad situation uh, but it's also good for him you know mm -hmm. is he everything she she is always looking for ways to she's a hustler yeah your, your kids are probably yeah. awesome. they watch yeah. us they yeah. want to do things they want to do cool things so if they want to start whatever it is they want to do that little kid that opens toys makes more than both you and i oh, combined times like, 10. His, yeah. and his parents are living life right yeah. off of it um, find a way for them. Uh, my dad made me low, mow every lawn in the neighborhood. He made yep. me shovel every lawn in the neighborhood. You know, there's this thing I saw on your TikTok where if you have a neighborhood of 50 homes and you just go to everybody's door and say, I'll, if you pay me $2 a week, I'll take your trash cans out and put them back for you. Yeah. And everybody's got two bucks. And, and I'll come collect at the end of the month and then they usually give you more than the eight bucks because oh, yeah. who's carrying eight bucks? Well, it's crazy. Yeah. So this guy I actually met, it's, 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 it's a guy named Mitch. He actually... I'm actually going to have him on podcast in like a week or two. Um, he actually invented this app, and it's called Minor Chores. And what yeah. it does, it's so dope that a kid oh, I gotta talk to this that guy. I'll cool. connect you. So what he does is the kid in your neighborhood, so your daughter Izzy, can post All the up kids. Yeah. In, in her neighborhood. It's like TaskRabbit for kids. It, it's exactly yeah. TaskRabbit for kids with full parental supervision. And what's cool is, well, I'll connect you guys on that because I there's a way that they the can invest. And, right and that's what I was just going to yeah. say. Get them to earn income. And get them to save it. You know, one yes. of the things I think I saw you do it with your with your son. You mm -hmm. did an interview with him. Yep. And he saves more oh, than his sister, right? His sister more. runs straight to Sephora. Sora. He's like, I'm holding on to my communion. Yeah. Money. He's holding yeah, on to his yeah, first yeah, communion yeah. money, right? Yeah. So and every kid's going to be a little different with yep. that. Uh, but get him to save it. I never told Izzy that she had the money. It was put in a bank account and then it was put. It was contributed. But start them young. They don't have to. You know, the other thing I told somebody the other day, if you're an Amex, you can get a card for your kid. Yeah. And you should. Because I remember when I was 18, all of a sudden I got my first Capital One card and I had what they called baby credit. Yeah. You don't yeah. need to have that. You don't no. need to go through that. You can start building it. And so Izzy has a budget that she has. To, she has an allowance. She And we go through the statement at the end of every month. So mm -hmm. she understands how money works. Yep. Like financial literacy is key. And then plug in this piece of the retirement. Get him making money. That's awesome, by yeah. the way. I hope he yeah. crushes it with that. And what's crazy is, is too, as you think about it, this is what I always tell like parents. If you really look at it, and let's just say it's, your kids are going to be much happier when they are 18 years old. So I'm going to look at my daughter in eight years, right? My daughter in eight years. Imagine having that conversation with your kid. 
And you have that conversation. And I'm like, hey, Kinsley, I know um, I had you take your income and I wanted you to put in here because you could put it in here and you could let it grow since your income was way below the taxable level. You put your income in here. It grows tax free. And guess what? Dad invested that for you in the S&P 500. And she's like, well, what's the S&P 500? I'm like, well, it's 500 of these stocks, blah, blah, blah. She's like, cool, Dad. What's it with? And I'm like, okay, you know what? You put in you know, $2,000 a year over the last 10 years, which is $20,000. And now it's grown to 56,000 or whatever, $60,000. And then she talks to her friend who's her roommate in college. And she's like, my dad, how are you paying for your college? My dad set me up an account. Well, how are you paying for college? My dad did too, but get, what would your dad buy? Oh, well, my dad actually invested in Bitcoin. And my dad put in $20,000 or I put in $20,000 of my money, $2,000 a year for 10 years. Well, what's yours worth? $17 million, yeah. you know, like, you know. <laughs> I'm not and, even gonna notice my tuition. <laughs> and, you know, I, and, yeah. and that's the reality. And if you look at it and I tell people, do what you want to do with your own money. And if you don't believe in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency with your own money, that is fine for you. But I will be willing to bet that your child when you look 10 years from now, gonna they're going to be one very happy and they're going to look back at you and be like, wait, mom and dad, let me get this straight. You chose to buy the S&P 500 rather than the best performing asset of all time that crushed every single other asset for the previous 14 years before you invested and you chose that? <laughs> like, what is wrong with you, yep, right? Exactly. Versus being like, hey, you know what? They might fire you as they, Yeah. <laughs> and we're, we're past the point of Bitcoin where it's going to fail. Like, yeah. it's that is so Just far like in the past. Just like where it's going to be banned. You know, it, people, I got that same thing all the time is, what if it gets banned? Well... A, just look at prohibition. See how, let's see how <laughs> yeah. that worked. Like, yeah. Let's break that apart. That, that basically brought in all these ancillary markets. It created NASCAR, created yeah. mafia, yeah. created all these things, right? Yeah. It doesn't work. Prohibition yeah. does not work in this country. And then somebody points to me. I'm, I'm, I'm a big history buff. The, the Gold uh, Confiscation Act, 1933 or 35 yeah. from FDR. Yep. That was a different time. We yeah. were we. This country was much more homogenous than it is today. Mm -hmm. Much more, I think, collective thought like we were americans this world this world is so divided now we are, it is scary how, how divided imagine trying to raise war bonds right now back oh, in world war ii oh. and world war one and, and, and they, people brought yeah. the gold voluntarily yes. they, they called it confiscation people went to the bank and said i'm doing my part for america here's my gold give me my 20 dollars." yes and then the government literally the day they had all the gold they just doubled the price of gold so that they could pay for the new deal that's exactly, exactly you can't that would not work today if people, even with gold, if you said, I would like everybody to come turn in the gold, from my cold, dead hands is what yeah, you hear oh, from most people. hundred percent. It would just not happen. So pro prohibition, conf confiscation, banning, these are things, these are, people will put these words out there that don't understand the world we live in today. Yeah. You just can't do it. There's not, you do not have a super majority in anything to pull something like that off. Yeah. It's not gonna happen. No. China is a whole nother ball game. Yeah. They, they control their society. They shut off internet. They do these things. The, hold on. And, and for the record, they, there's always this mystery. Are they this new digital yuan? Is it being backed by Bitcoin at yeah. some point? They shut it down for their people, but there's still nodes in China. There's still hash oh, power yeah. happening in that continent. Who is it? Is it the government? Uh, I mean, again, nobody really knows, but you can't turn something off that's decentralized, immutable. Immutable yeah. is a big word. You just can't turn it off. You can't do it. And anything. the government, what we saw with the SEC over the last three or four years, maybe even six or seven, especially Gensler's era, has been just ignore, ignore, ignore. And then when they couldn't ignore us long enough, they started dropping the rumor mill and they started talking about security and these types of things. That whole era is behind us. Yep. And the, and I don't know what'll happen in November, but I don't I don't want to care who wins. I don't think Gensler keeps the job coming no. in next year. And, and look at it. You look at it this way. Change. So you look at it going four years ago. Trump Basically, when somebody asks about cryptocurrency, he's like, well, I'm kind of indifferent, but I personally don't believe in it, you know, myself at that time, right? But he's taking donations in it. <laughs> now he is. And then you, Biden was like anti-crypto, okay, right? They both got away with a, either a neutral stance or an anti-crypto stance, right? Well, now what's happened in just the last three and a half years, you have to understand that Four years ago, the people now that are in college, the, the people that are sub 25 years old, all of those people between the 18 and 25, that major swing vote, right? We know on Coinbase, 94% of those people, okay, have either owned cryptocurrency or like cryptocurrency, right? 
So what ended up having to happen was, is now cryptocurrency is a real point in this debate. Yep. So much so, I have seen, I follow a lot of crypto Twitter, and I've seen probably hundreds of things that said, I'll tell you this, not a big fan of Trump, not a big fan of Biden. Whoever has the best crypto policy, that's who I'm voting yeah. for. Because they love their crypto more than they hate either one of those I'd be people. I'd shocked to see if Warren holds up on this one. She won't. I don't think, I just, because the guy that she's, the, the, the component she has, he started accepting crypto even earlier yes. in the game. And there were, there's, a, there's a lot of people around him. And she, like, you bang that drum long enough, like the Pelosi's of the world, et cetera, mm -hmm. eventually the drum wears off. And yep. there's, I, we are kind of when... We're, we're at that point, I think this is like, it's not like hippies 60s, but we're at a point where there's age and there's youth. Yeah. And there's going to be a handoff between generations. And it may be pretty, it may be messy, but it's going to happen. Just like when Kennedy came in. We went from Eisenhower, which is the oldest president on history, to Kennedy was right after that. There is a moment in time coming. I don't know who it's going to be. I always yeah. thought someday it was going to be me. My <laughs> yeah. buddies always thought. Yeah. I, my buddy in college. I vote for you. Yeah, yeah. But I vote for you. I, may, I definitely make you like Secretary of Commerce or something <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, but my buddy got me this constitution to grad for high school gra or college graduation. And on the inside of it, he wrote, Chris, I hope someday to have to explain to the American people why you feel it's necessary to change if few lines in this document <laughs> yeah. and and so that would be i mean but it may not be me but there's going to be there's people like you and i out yeah. there there's a world coming and there's a youth coming 94 percent love crypto I, this is this is the future and yeah. get, getting into it is huge getting your kids into it they're gonna thank you they're oh, gonna thank you 100 percent. and so kind of wrapping us up i always like to ask people kind of like three specific questions right because okay. i think it really helps people and i feel like a lot of times on podcasts especially when it comes to investing or money, people talk about investing in things or this or that. And I know me as a user on the other side, I was like, well, okay, that was all cool stuff, but like, I wanna know kind of more. So I like to ask these questions. Number one, what has been the best investment from an ROI standpoint you've ever made in your life? You don't have to say the dollars you made it, but what was the investment and kind of like, what was the approximate ROI? Like if you were gonna look at that in your life. So two, obviously, the with, with with a little effort was the ETH play in yep. seventeen. Yeah, that was a little effort, right time, right place. Um, but really, my best investment has been in myself. Yeah. So jumping in both feet, uh, working with partners that let me in for sweat equity, getting a big solid piece of a company that I could control and build. Not everybody can do that, but I, no. I invested in myself. Yeah, and I, I mean, like, for you guys yeah. to know, like the company that that he was one of three co-founders of them. They have $14 billion in assets and almost, what, two, almost 200,000 users? Yeah, almost 200,000. Yeah, yeah, that's like, look it up in the world. That is a major financial powerhouse. This isn't your residential investment advisor on the corner. You know, <laughs> you know I need to sit, have you sit down and be a hype man for my wife. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, she always talks about, well, shares don't pay the bills. And I'm yeah. like, well, neither do you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> jokingly, I love yeah, her yeah. so much. Yeah, but yeah. she was saying something about one of her friends got a fake LADWP bill. She's like, I can tell this is fake. I was like, baby, you've, you've never seen an LADWP <laughs> yeah. bill. How do you know this, yeah. this is fake? So yeah, but investing in myself, it's a longer term play. Uh, they say that if you want to, if you want to, uh, to test your faith in God, become an entrepreneur. Yeah. I know you're big. Yeah. Uh, and my yeah. Isabel goes to Catholic church yeah. or a Catholic school. I try, yeah. I'm not as good of a Catholic as I'd like to be, but, yeah. but you, they, you, have you have to find foundation. that balance. You have yeah. to have that foundation balance. Yeah. So investing in myself is probably the yeah. biggest thing. And then number two, what would you say, what name an investment that you lost money on? Like mine, I always tell people is I invested in a Ponzi scheme that ended up making it on American Greed. I got hosed uh, at the time, invested in a Ponzi. I didn't know it was a Ponzi scheme, obviously. It was with nobody a very ever reputable does. guy, right? It was my friend's dad, lost 400 grand at a time where that was like 95% of my worth, right? So I always like to tell people, because a lot of people come to show and the average person feels like, man, everything they touch to is gold. I'm no. like, no, no, that is not the reality. What well, we the say first is the three worst. companies that we tried failed. Yeah, so, see? And if we yeah. could have quit there, you know, you get that, you see that guy that's digging towards the diamond and then he gives up right before he reaches there. We could have all quit. We were tired. We didn't want to put any more money in. We actually have another company that we're doing right now that we're kind of hitting a wall on. We're just yeah. like, you know, it's every hour of your life is dedicated to something. You get 160, 168 a week, right? Yeah. And you got to maximize them. You, I think, get like 268 because <laughs> you're a maniac. Um, I can't keep up with you, but like that, that, so yeah, you got to make the most of the hours. So yeah, I've had a couple of businesses fail. Uh, yep. all, any good entrepreneur has. Yeah. R losing in Ripple, that was that's yep. probably an exact trade. Yeah. Um, Lucid was yep. my I bought Lucid stock because I thought I really thought they were going to get a takeover by Tesla mm -hmm. or something, and it didn't happen. And I'm still holding it because I think yep. there may be a day. The game of electric cars is not over yet. There's still many chess pieces moving, but that one is 
that's down like 80, 90%. Yeah. Like yeah. it's not, it does not seem it's to want to come back. back. Yeah. yeah. And, but you know, sometimes you hold on to these yeah. things. It's like, what am it's I going to do with what's like left over? Yeah. Cause you're like, it's yeah. not worth selling like, it for a couple yeah. grand. I'm going to just print the stock share and frame <laughs> yeah. it on the wall as a reminder. <laughs> yep. Uh, so yeah, those are my, those are my losses. And then uh last question I have for you. So handed you a hundred grand today, right? Gave you a hundred thousand bucks and said, Hey, you can only invest it in one single thing and you can't touch it for eight years. What would you choose? Bitcoin, baby. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe your solar company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because I tell people, it's like, I would normally say Bitcoin, but for me, I chose Solana. And I do the, like Solana And the lot. only reason why I did that on like, uh, if I was going to do that, one, the I'm a little bit riskier. Right. I'm a little bit riskier as a like a risky, um, pretty, well, pretty you much. Said, a, when you said eight years, yeah. eight years for me was there's yeah. plays in between on Solana. There's yes. plays, there's swaps, there's there's things that'll change. Yeah. And that if you were if you shorten it to two years, four yeah. years, I might I might your, choose your, else. your answer truthfully will probably have higher returns than my answers. So Solana's got some cool stuff. It going does on, man. though, it really man. Does. Because it's it's becoming the network for the people that don't want to deal with the Ethereum network. Yeah. And it's it's not mutually exclusive. They benefit off of each other, but Solana it had some rough years. Yeah, remember? yeah. It, didn't, it had that whole issue that went down with Soulflare yeah. and things like that. So these things happen, but it grew from that. Like yes. What happens usually? You'll see any any crypto project. You see the first time they hit any kind of difficulty, the, that's that separates them in from the boys. Yep. It's yep. just instantly like they're either going to grow from this and yep. become better, or they're going to be gone. Yeah. And, and you pretty know pretty quickly. Like it was yep. it was pretty obvious with Luna. It was pretty obvious with Celsius. It was pretty obvious with Voyager. Yeah. Like the minute that like, there was no, oh, this might work out. No, this is done. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> yeah. You know, and the last thing too, because I know a lot of people, and if you guys just recap on that, every single person has the ability in a traditional IRA to put in $7,000 this year in 2024, regardless of your income, right? And for a SEP IRA, obviously you could do it if you're self-employed, you have that component to it, ideally that you can be able to do it. Or if you're, you know, technically, if you are an employer, you can offer SEPs, but you got to keep those contributions kind of to everybody within the employee. Yep. But obviously a Roth and your Roth IRA, as long as you make, you know, under those income limits, that you can this in my opinion would be the first investment if i was making a hundred grand a year as a single individual or as a household i'm going roth ira because you get to put that money in post tax it grows tax free yep. you know all that so when you pull it out even you if you don't out. invest anything yeah. even if you just put the eight grand and it sits there for a year because you don't know how what you want to do yeah. you just lowered your income from 100 to 92. Yep. you just Saved yourself some money, some money yeah. from Uncle Sam. And if you're not using these tools to your benefit, you're not going to find that. It's it's just financial freedom. Yeah. It's, it's not living paycheck to paycheck with most people are doing, even the yep. wealthier are doing. It's not dealing with uh, credit card debts that are higher than pre-08 crisis. Yeah. It's, it's not dealing with uh, credit de consumer defaults that are going crazy right now. Like yep. you, thank goodness you're out of lending. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm sure you're thrilled. Say, I am, cause, I'm cause happy. There's cracks it. just happening everywhere. And the best thing you do for yourself, even if you do nothing with the eight grand or seven, thousand whatever you're qualified for do nothing with it you still did something by putting it aside exactly and, and so if huge. people wanted to go and they wanted to sign up for it um tell them where they can go to sign up and if they want to like follow you what social account you're active most over on your handle so i'm not a big instagram guy yep. i found you like because like i actually you're the only thing i watch on instagram <laughs> well, it's, thank you. it's really because i open <laughs> it I, I open it just to like you know see what family's up to whatever i have like 700 followers i never got <laughs> yeah, big on it yeah. but i you are always right there so yeah. whoever's doing your stuff <laughs> yeah. give them a raise yeah, they're doing yeah. a good job but uh linkedin's my big one. I got about, I, that's where, where where I'm most active and where um, I like it because Twitter you don't have to like I don't I hate that you don't have a face. Yeah, it bothers me. Like, yeah, if you show me who you are, if you want to debate about something, put your face up there and let's talk about yep. this and let's debate. It, Twitter just is a, kind of a cesspool sometimes yep. for me. Yeah. Um, and then obviously I'm kind of the face man of Bitcoin IRA. Yep. So if you go there, you can subscribe to all of our channels and Perfect. you'll see a lot of me. Um, and we'll probably have something like forward slash Decker soon. Perfect. That's what I'm hoping yeah, for. Yeah, perfect. Because uh, I hope this isn't the first or the last time we get no, to see each other. No, absolutely not. So what I'll do is you guys can go, if you guys want to check it out, is you can just go to bitcoinira.com slash Decker, and you can go ahead and you'll be able to sign up for three minutes.